the information I'm bringing today. Oh, it's about to get motherfucking juicy, girl. <laughs> So, number one, um, I wanted to talk about talismans. Now, before I talk about talismans, I can't really talk about talismans without talking about money. And, okay. So, in my book, for those of you that don't have it, get yourself this fabulous divinity, okay? It's, I mean, it's a hefty book, you know what I'm saying? It's divine. In chapter 10, I talked about common misunderstandings and the relationship that money has to the religion. But something that I need to re-bring up or revisit on this video is the relationship that God has to money. Now, as we all know, and from what we've seen, you know, this year and for the last, like, hell, because literally this fucking feels like the apocalypse we've been living in. For the past couple of months, we've seen how money has, you know, been reinvested around the world to really lead to our destruction. Whether the destruction is leading towards more climate change or more political madness y'all know how money has either been used to heal or to destroy therefore since money quite literally has the energy to create positive or negative changes we have to admit that god can work through money you see how that works because god is creative energy and if creative energy is in money then god is working through money you see what i mean however we as human beings have the ability to, by our will, do these changes or progress towards these changes. But really, money runs this entire planet, as we've seen. Money quite literally runs shit around here. So, as talismans, and this is, you know, this is where y'all about to find some cute shit out in this religion, what y'all gonna find is that a lot of these talismans are associated with pulling in money. Now, if you were once afraid of calling in money, girl, you gonna need some money because where we had it in this world... You're going to need the shit, okay? You know you know what I'm saying? So, it's important that if you are entering this religion, if you are entering this spiritual path, the 21 divisions, or even Buddha, or any African spirituality, you will see that there are either spells or divinities that are associated to prosperity. Excuse me. And you will find that there are plenty of talismans in the 21 divisions. Now, whether you are a, de a devotee, you know, as someone that goes to a witch or goes to a mambo or a papaloa, you know, you can still wear these talismans. Usually the talismans are actually prescribed to devotos or devotees of the religion, people that believe but don't serve the spirit. And there are, of course, some servidores de misterio that utilize the talismans. But there are some talismans that carry the energy of the loa or prescribed um, or associated, excuse me, to the energy of the Loa. And then there are some talismans that really just carry sort of a specific type of energy for the benefit of the individual. So, in the 21 Divisions, you won't find a lot of European-associated uh, talismans in it. You will find that there are a lot of Christian symbolism used in our talismans, but let's go through the list of the common ones that you will find. So, in the 21 Divisions, an Organite Pyramid... I'm sure a lot of you have seen, such as this one, whether it is big or small, usually has, you know, little items at the bottom, right? And this organite pyramid and its symbolism. So the symbolism of an organite, um, it obviously has its metaphysical purpose. It has its, you know, its ionizing properties. It has, you know, just its own thing. Metaphysically speaking, it has its own abilities. But in the 21 divisions, in a spiritual sense, what it actually symbolizes for a lot of people is different from person to person. But from what I was taught, a pyramid of the pyramid of an organite actually symbolizes the elevation of the abilities of an individual or a specific altar. So for example, if you have an altar on the ground, right, and you want that energy of the altar to reach its peak or constantly grow, an organite pyramid would be ascribed to the altar. Now, an organite pyramid can also be used for an individual that is growing. So this can actually be placed on the boveda, 
or any meditational spaces or any prayer spaces because it helps to basically raise the energies to the top or basically go straight to God, which is what the colors actually symbolize its purpose. Now, another association that the Organite Pyramid has for us is that it represents that you always start from the bottom or any at any moment in your life, whether you are at the bottom, you will always reach the top. Basically, you will get through any obstacles. You will overcome things. So the Organite Pyramid has a lot of symbolism in the 21 Divisions, and it's very important for people to have with them, especially at an altar or in their own space. Now, another symbolism that you will see or another talisman that you will see are resguardos such as these. Now, resguardos come in a million and one ways, but typically the most important thing is the color association or the symbolic um, amulets that come with it is what makes it a powerful, powerful talisman. Now, Talismans are charged by beliefs, and that is something that is really important for all of you to know. If you are looking to find a talisman to work for you, or you want a talisman to really resonate with you, first of all, you have to have some type of belief in it. Now, Christians obviously feel that the talisman of a rosary is very, very powerful for them. And yes, a cross is a talisman, or rosary is a talisman of protection for Christians. So a talisman for other people would be a small Quran for Muslims. Um, some people will have, you know, other different types of, you know, talismans representative of their religions. Now, um, a small iconography of a Hindu god would be a small talisman to have, you know, for people that are Hindus. Um, and so you get the point. But the talisman must represent something to you. You can obviously make a talisman mean something to you. And one way that you do that is by charging it. Now, everyone has their own ways of charging objects, especially talismans. But... A talisman is usually charged by what an individual feels is powerful enough to charge the talismans. So for example, a Catholic would feel that holy water is one of the most powerful ways of charging a talisman. So holy water would be, you know, put on a rosary, for example. Therefore, they are charging the talisman. Another example would be um, Wiccans, perhaps some, not all, would um, perhaps bury crystals. And that crystal is now being charged and the crystal is their talisman. Um, so as you can see belief powers things now also emotional things or emotional sentiments charge talismans. So for example, even if it's like a college ring, right? And it means something to you and you always wear it when you feel like You need it or you feel like you need motivation or you need encouragement or you need a reminder of where you've come That is you sentimentally charging a talisman and you're making that ring represent something for you therefore it becomes an object of attracting that sort of positivity in your life and that is how you charge things everyone has their own ways of charging things but every motive or every action of charging is usually backed by either a belief or an emotion so anger can be a way of charging objects for example a lot of people charge talismans to become a hexed object and usually how they would do that would would be they would be angry as they are charging and cursing at the object or the talisman therefore they are cursing now the talisman now i just went over the rosary with you guys and a way of charging it in the 21 divisions we sometimes not all again not everyone is the same way but and these traditions are definitely different from person to person but one way that a lot of people charge rosaries is by holy water or by perhaps if they're dedicating a rosary to a loa or a statue in their baji they would wear, they would perfume it um, you know what I mean? And for us in the 21 divisions, perfume is a way of, you know, alejando las malas vibra o levantando la energía. So in English, that would be letting go or releasing the negative energies and raising the, the energy or the vibration of said objects or even the space. So a rosary can also be charged in that way and become a powerful protection amulet or protection talisman for you. Now, I'm going to go off, uh, about a few other talismans that I have to show you guys. Um... Before I go in, a few others that are used in... The, and all of these that I've just mentioned to you guys are used in the 21 Divisions. Now, a machete, such as this one, would be used for protection. Now, you will see that a lot of talismans in the 21 Divisions are also associated to protection a lot of times. But a lot of people don't talk about what kind of protection. And there is a need to know what kind of protection we're talking about. Because you don't want to be overprotected. And some talismans when they are sort of protecting every area of your life can actually do more harm to you by locking your roads or closing your roads in an attempt to protect you than they do good. So for example, a machete like this one would be for protection against physical danger or physical violence. And the way that it would manifest is getting you ready for war in times of danger. So giving you a fighter spirit or warrior spirit would be what a machete talisman would be used for. 
Now, protection against spiritual danger would be more so the resguardo of the blade and the colors associated to San Miguel Arcangel, which is red and green. Um, so typically color and symbolism would represent something for everyone, but that is something to always note. A machete to me represents protection against physical danger by getting you ready for war. And the red and green for me again, would be um, for protection against spiritual warfare because it's associated to the colors of Saint Michael the Archangel. Now, keys, very important because they are very used in the 21 divisions, are used to open locked doors or doors that are hard to have open for you. So if you find yourself, you know, with your life sort of, um, with your doors closed and you're having trouble making money or getting money, a key would be something that you would want to charge. How you can charge it would be to surround it, you know, and bury it or perhaps water it down with perfumes that have also been soaking, you know, herbs like parsley for money, um, honey as well. You know, you can use some of those things. But I'm just here to show you guys some common talismans used in the 21 Divisions. Now, this is not used in the 21 Divisions, but it is used in Voodoo a lot. So this is a talisman representative of the Holy Twins or the Sacred Twins. Um, and it's a talisman typically given to children that are twins that need protection or that want to feel connected to the other twin. So a talisman like that is very important to have. Another talisman very common in the 21 Divisions, if not the most common, is the Resguardo of the Collares. Um, in Santeria they call them Elekis or Elekes. And those Collares are very, very powerful to represent protection of a certain loa upon you or for whatever purpose the loa gives them to you that purpose being you know manifested through you by them having that collares on you now another type of or a few other types of talismans that are very very common in the 21 divisions that you will all see is um the cruz de caravaca which is more so known for a lot of people that have or are originating from south american um ethnicities they, the Cruz de Caravaca is very good for warding off evil and increasing fortune. Now, the Cruz de Caravaca is a sort of cross like the Holy Rosary, but instead of having uh, just two arms like this one, it'll have four. And the top one is a lot smaller. Um, I may insert a picture if I find a really good one for you guys to show as an example. Now, another type of talisman and these are not i'm just listing a few others that um are not so common in the 21 divisions but they do or they originate from european um traditions and of course people in 21 divisions can still practice european types of magic or systems of magic because everyone's entitled to do so um but another form of talismans used or would be used would be um the tablets from the book of enochian magic um tablets from the books of moses you will also find the evil eye. Very powerful talisman from so many cultures and so many ethnicities believe in them. But the talisman of the evil eye is also good to ward off the evil eye. Um, crystals, as I mentioned, um, in some groups, definitely powerful talismans, especially when they're wrapped and used for a specific purpose. Sigils, very powerful talismans, especially among those that practice the occult. Um, and bones, lastly, bones. Now, bones is very used in um, people that practice hoodoo. Um, and a lot of uh, Central American practices, uh, you will find bones, whether it, them being used as necklaces for protection or in connection to divination or in connection to spirits. So I really just wanted to leave this video out there for you guys to understand the many powerful talismans that we use in the 21 Divisions and how you can apply some of these. Now, to go about their purpose, um, because I feel like I didn't give you guys enough of that, the rosary is, again for protection. This one is associated to so many things, but it always represents going, you know, from the bottom to the top. Um, you can always, if you have a brujo around you, you can always go to a brujo to get a resguardo blessed for you, such as these, the elekes, as you guys would call them, um, blessed for a specific purpose. Now, every single loa, of course, had has, excuse me, a specific um, energy that they're most powerful working with. So you can definitely have a brujo bless uh, collar that is appropriate for you um, for whatever purpose. So it can be for prosperity, it can be for luck, it could be for so many other things. Now, bracelets are really good for when you are trying to, you know, shake the right hands or, you know, make the right decisions that get you from point A to point B. So a resguardo or a talisman for, 
the arms could be easily you know for love for luck for money all of those things and of course if it's for a specific purpose like love or luck i wouldn't put a blade to a resguardo if it means something to you you can attach a heart you can attach you know whales i know a lot of people believe in also the luck of elephants so things like that would be a benefit to you and again very powerful talismans but again all that power comes from the belief that you have in them because the belief in a talisman or the belief in an object or thing is actually what manifests it in your life because like i said earlier guys you know Although money is a powerful creator and it has the energy to create like God does and therefore God works through the money, God also works through our beliefs and through us. So if you believe that you are protected because you're wearing an amulet, that belief, that belief will definitely power or excuse me, manifest that protection in times of need. So I hope this video was extremely informative. I know it was long, I'm so sorry, but there's so many talismans that I really wanted to talk about and I really went through all of them really, really fast and I mentioned them. Um, but if you guys have any more questions, comment below. I will take the time to respond to every single one of you, I promise. So, Lucy Progresso, love you lots. Uh. Also, for those of you that don't know, my Patreon is finally open to the public and I started posting my tarot project of the 21 Divisions and there's so many exclusive videos that are going to be listed on there too there's already a few up um there's so much like that my patreon has to offer you guys um there's a lifetime of knowledge that will be posted at my patreon and if you support me you support my work then you're gonna love my patreon because all you gotta do is just give a few dollars and you guys will be having a lifetime of knowledge so come and take notes live love and laugh lucy progresso to all of you <laughs>